Hello Internet. This is one of those smelly cards I thought I'd fix real quick and send it back before developing any allergic reactions from it. But the things didn't go as smooth as expected, so here we are trying to get it fixed. Actually, card came with the fix already. I don't plan on doing anything about it. It's ugly, but I think it's functional. What I want to do now is to do some basic measurements and make sure that we don't have any shorts. We start with 12 volt with kilo ohms, 1k on 1.8, PEX with almost 10 ohms. This is 5 volt with 800 ohms, memory 31 ohms. This is Samsung, so that's normal. This 5 volt inductor with several kilo ohms, and this one here is the same 3.3 volt with 6k. Fuses are okay, so let's move over to the other side. This fuse is also okay. And while we're in the back, let's check the first data pair. Clock reference and PEX reset. Now let's check the voltage. We have 1.8 present. That means we have 5 volt. And if we have PEX, we have memory and the core. Everything seems to work fine. I am not sure why a customer mentioned problem with the 5 volt and where. So let's plug it in and see what's going on. As you can see, the image is frozen and no new image is coming out. And if we take a look at the HDMI pins, we see rust. Let's do a light touch up and see if that helps. Okay, card now outputs the picture and even manages to pass the memory test and everything seems fine. But since pins inside the port are rusted, I decided that I don't want to take any chances and just replace the port altogether. The port is going to come from a card donated by a viewer like you. Thank you.
I also decided to clean up this customer repair. You can see it looks a little bumpy, but if you look on an angle, it actually looks okay because the pins inside the port, they're like springs. There's a little bit of room for wiggle, so I wouldn't worry about it. Okay, here we go. Let's test the new port. And as soon as I power the card on, you can see that the image is frozen. That means I had enough for the day and I'm going home. Goodbye. Actually, I'm already home, so I might as well just try again. And uh, this time I'm going to hold a cable on the angle. And what do you know? It works. Um, my best guess is Flux got inside the port and coated the contacts. So I'll give it a spray of cleaner and it's back in business. Without fully assembling the card, I ran Firmware to make sure it does not crash under 100% load. I uh, ran Heaven to make sure it does not artifact, so everything is looking good so far. Next on the list is to replace the pads. I think these pads are 2mm, but for whatever reason I always get it wrong, so what I'll do now is what I always do when I change the pads. That is, assume I'm right and cut all the pads and hope for the best. By the way, this is the brand I'm using. I'm very happy with its performance and I refuse to use anything else. Okay, next step is to pre-assemble the cart, press it all together like that and then we take it apart again. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is how you kill your GPU with incorrect thermal pad thickness. Okay, so we know 2mm pads are too thick. The next obvious thing to do is to try 1.5mm, right? Right. Except uh, this time, I'll be a little bit more resourceful and apply only minimal amount of pads I need to verify that we have the correct thickness. Partially assemble the cart, press fit, let's look at the pads and they do not make contact with the heatsink. Perfect. Let's take it all apart again and look at what we have. It appears to me that 1.5mm does work well for the VRM but not for the memory. And if 2mm is too thick and 1.5 is too thin for the memory, what do you do? Correct. We turn 2mm pad into 1.75mm pad by using this out of space technology device. I will give it a quick wipe so it does not contaminate the pads and I will take those previously cut pads and I will simply run them through this device to make them thinner with every pass. Every pass I make, I will take the measurements to make sure I don't push it too far. I will do the same thing with the rest of the pads, then put them where they belong. Clean old paste and apply new. Pre-assemble the card again and inspect the result. Looks like we have a good contact with the memory, but we want to make sure we have a good contact with the core also. So we want to open it up again and as you can see, the contact is perfect. Now let's finish the rest of the DRM pads, as well as some pads on the back. Put everything back together, get it all nice and clean, like new. Plug everything in and see if everything still works. First boot. And as you can see, nothing's happening. Perfect. Have a good day. So I removed the HDMI connector again and I think the issue here is with this resistor. This resistor here is supposed to supply 5V to the HDMI port and if it doesn't then the display will not react as you have just seen. Later a customer explained to me that the card was next to salt water. Gaming at the beach I guess, I don't know, so salty moisture could cause all sorts of issues. I'll just uh, reflow every component in question starting from the HDMI area on the top as well as on the back uh, just to make sure that everything is soldered on solid. Solder the connector back on and try again.
this time I'm wiggling the cord in every direction to make sure it actually fixed and it seems okay. As usual, I like to load the card with firmware to see how well it performs under maximum load. And this time I'm trying something new in terms of monitoring the card. I normally use GPU-Z, but this utility seems to have a whole lot more information, so maybe it'll be helpful to me in the future, I don't know. Time will tell. Followed by superposition. No problems there. Uh, heaven to make sure that we don't get any weird artifacts, which we don't. And I think this card is a fix. And this is it. If you guys have a card that needs a repair, let me know. My contact information is in the description. Most of my tools and supplies I use are listed in there as well, so please go check them out if you need to. Goodbye.